Okay, everyone, welcome to the work of Byron Katie introduction. I'm really happy to share this with you. This work has changed my life. It's really powerful when you get it. So I'm really uh, hoping and intending that you will get it on a deeper level after watching this training. I'm going to start with a quote from Byron Katie. This is from her website, actually. I discovered that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. But when I didn't believe them, I didn't suffer. And that is true for every human being. Freedom is as simple as that. Freedom is as simple as that. I'm repeating it because it's interesting for me. I hadn't read that quote um, before. I mean, I mean, I studied her work in depth, but I haven't uh, seen that one recently. And I thought she's so right. It really is as simple as that. We complicate it, the ego complicates it, but it really is as simple as that. Um, when you don't believe your thoughts, you don't suffer. <sighs> and she says, I found that suffering is optional. I found a joy within me that has never disappeared, not for a single moment. That joy is in everyone always. And I invite you not to believe me. I invite you to test it for yourself. I love that because, you know, she doesn't, she's not dogmatic, you know, she's like, the work is there and, and it's up to us whether we want to free ourselves from the chains that bind us and those chains are, are the beliefs, right? And it's a really powerful process. It's not the only process. There's many roads that lead to Rome that, that lead to inner freedom. But personally, I've been a searcher, I would say, for the last 20 years. This is by far the most powerful tool that I have found for um, resolving conflict, for that lightness, and for that clarity. I'm also a big fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, and that approaches it from a completely different angle. Um, and I think both combined are a great recipe, personally. Just for those that don't know me, I'm briefly going to introduce myself and then share my story of how I found the work. So my name is pronounced Neve, even though it's spelled N-I-A-M-H. I'm a mindset and leadership coach, and I help leaders to lead themselves first, to lead themselves better so that they can lead others better. We're all leaders, but we've got to start with ourselves. Everything happens on the inside. I'm a facilitator of the work of Byron Katie. Interestingly, I actually um, deleted, this is a common intro I use for trainings, and just FYI, I deleted the word former certified facilitator because I did certify in 2011 and I decertified in 2016 just because I wanted to follow my own path and uh, use other tools in my toolbox and um, I guess not, I don't really like to follow other people's rules or not that there was any firm rules, but um, it was just at a time where I, I wanted to take that that path, um, bravely take that path. It was, it was a hard decision to leave the Institute. But since yesterday, interestingly, the Institute is no longer. It's called the Institute for the Work. And it apparently, uh, Byron Katie has now closed it. And so that means that there is no more certified facilitators. There's just people that practice the work. So... Anyway, I did certify when certification was a thing. <laughs> so uh, maybe it still is. Don't quote me. Uh, you know, maybe they've got a new arrangement. I'm not sure about that. But I uh, I did learn yesterday uh, by accident that uh, the Institute no longer, no longer exists, that it was announced uh, two days ago. So I'm a career coach, executive coach, mindset coach, laser coach, money coach, lots of different certifications I took since 2009. I'm a lifelong learner and love to hone my craft. Also very passionate about fitness and health because I believe that, you know, if you're looking for inner peace and freedom, that that there definitely is a physical aspect to it, you know, taking care of ourselves. If we're wanting inner peace and freedom and we're meditating and questioning our beliefs, but we're eating junk all day, we're going to feel that. <laughs> so um, I think that aspect, uh, I know that, that aspect is important as well to um, treat the body well. That's um, housing our soul. I <laughs> uh, love nature, meditation, simplicity, order, fun, laughter, and um, being imperfect, I think is an important one. Actually, the name of my company is Fired Up Coaching, and Fired Up is an acronym. I'll just br briefly explain, explain that. F is find your fire. The I is ignite your inner leader. The R is revolutionize your thinking. The E is ego dissolution. D is discipline activation. U is unleash your quantum self. And P, speaking of perfectionism, uh, is perfectionism be gone. 
right? So um, because perfectionism will hold us back from putting ourselves out there, from sharing our message and from impacting others. I formerly worked at the UN for 13 years. Then I went on to, I had a company called Lot to Learn, work with children with dyslexia. I studied, I specialized in dyslexia and, and neurodivergent, uh, the neurodivergent brain in my master's in education. But now I really am firmly uh, a, a leadership coach. Okay, so here is my story in pictures. I'm just going to share three pictures. It was fun. I went back to... Um, I went back to, uh, I, I hid their faces in one slide and forgot to hide them in the other, but so be it. Um, because it's not about them, it's my story, right? Um, so I met a friend in 2009. This is April 2009. I found it on my Facebook. Imagine, that's the great thing about Facebook. All the photos are there. And with my daughter, Zara, she was a baby then. She's 16 now. And I went for lunch with my friend and she had... She, Six months previous, something very, very challenging happened in her life that she was totally unexpected. And it was a serious crisis. And I expected that she would be, you know, full of bitterness and anger. And there was a lot of betrayal involved in, in what happened to her and uh, what happened to her, what happened for her. <laughs> because then as a result of that, she went on and she's still very active in the work. But so she, she, I said to her, what's your secret? You know, why are you doing so well uh, considering what happened? And she said, well, I discovered this tool called The Work of Byron Katie. And I remember I was at a place for anybody familiar with Geneva, a very old, great restaurant called Café du Soleil. I remember sitting there and saying, I remember exactly where I was sitting back in 2009. And I was saying, you know, explain it to me. And she did. And I thought, that sounds rubbish. <laughs> in my head you know it was like it's so simplistic and I was like what, what, what that's really yeah but luckily I was so impressed with her transformation I thought there's something in this and she said check it out on YouTube so I started to watch uh, Byron Katie doing the work on YouTube and I became hooked on it a little bit the way I'm hooked on Dr. Jonas Spencer testimonials these days. I just love seeing stories of people transforming and people overcoming their stress and overcoming their beliefs and overcoming illness and pain and suffering. And um, so, yeah, that's my Netflix, really. <laughs> so I was watching these videos on YouTube. Uh, this was April 2009. And... Um, then I think it was about, I can't remember what month, but my father had been diagnosed with cancer uh, when Zara was two months old, actually. And there she's about nine months, I think. And uh, it was a really tough time. It was terminal cancer. And I was traveling to Ireland a lot. And I remember my sister saying to me, um, you know, and she was on dialysis. So she wasn't able to see my father as much as I was. She was on daily dialysis in Dublin and he was in the south of Ireland. And it seemed like I was nearly going more than her, seeing him more. And she was, one in one phone conversation, she was quite off with me and say, you shouldn't go. You've got three young children under five and, you know, it's irresponsible. And I remember we were both in pain. You know, if, you, if you've experienced this, you know, the death of a, uh, a parent, you'll understand, you know, it was, it was, it was just, just, <laughs> we were, we were um, <laughs> coming from a place of pain. And I got very angry in my head. I didn't tell her, but in my head, I was like, dare she tell me what to do, you know, about whether I should see my dying father or not. And and I was just, you know, really desperate to spend any amount of time I could with him. And I felt so angry. So I decided in my head, I, was like, I don't even want to see her when I go home. And nah, 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 nah. you know, so I was I was angry. Now, I've been watching the YouTube videos. I was not doing the process. I was just watching and saying, oh, that's lovely. But I was too lazy. Honestly, it was, yeah, I just didn't feel, you know, I just felt too lazy to practice it. But when I when this happened and I was on the plane to Ireland and I had printed out worksheets, I'll be sharing, I'll be showing you what the worksheets are shortly. And um, I was on the plane and I was angry at her and I thought, I really should try the process on her. So I wrote a worksheet. First, what you do is you identify your stressful beliefs in a worksheet. You get prompts and you identify your stressful beliefs. So I wrote this worksheet and I chose one of the beliefs to question. I had maybe 10 or 12 or 14, I can't remember. And the belief I chose was she shouldn't tell me what to do. And I questioned it using this powerful questioning process, which I'm going to share with you. And I went from feeling anger and like, I don't even want to see her when I'm home. I don't want to see her for a long time, really. You know, and that could have, you know, if I had not discovered the work that could have unfolded like that, you know, could have been like just, you know, the way families suddenly stop speaking. <laughs> 
But instead, it shifted me so much because I saw it from a different perspective. And I'll be sharing that with you um, in more detail uh, in this presentation. But um, I got off the plane and I immediately called her and I just felt so much love for her. And I completely had let go of my rage <laughs> of she shouldn't tell me what to do. And because of this process, when I questioned my thinking, it was my thinking, not the situation that was causing the suffering, um, I, I, I experienced a new reality and a, and a new level of connection with her. And I'll explain in more detail how that came about. But the reason I want to sh I'm sharing this with you now is then I realized this could transform my life. I recognized I had a lot of stressful, skewed beliefs that were inaccurate and causing me so much pain. And we all do. Um, and this is what weighs us down, you know. I, I frequently talk about experience to feel lighter. And of course, I felt lighter when I got off that plane because I wasn't weighed down by a confused belief. So I'm very passionate about this process because it has the power to transform your life. It has the power to transform humanity, you know, to, when you see your your reality from a different angle and you experience that love and connection, um, everything changes. So, um, so I started then to do it more and more. And I thought, this is incredible. So I called my friend. And I said, you know, we've got to do a workshop. There was a nine day school for the work in Los Angeles. I had three kids under five and I was very attached to my kids. So this was like, oh, you know, even leaving them overnight was tough for me. But I so wanted to do this because I believed it could transform my life, you know, and, um, you know, I had a lot of suffering in my head. And my friend said, yeah, but Neve, like, how come we can't go to L.A.? You know, I don't have the money for it. And. I was like, where there's a will, there's a way, you know, we'll find a way, you know, so like, da, 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 you know, determined. And we applied for scholarships. And um, I, I remember I was put on a payment plan, very generous payment plan, which was wonderful and uh, managed to get the money for the hotel and flights. And yeah, we, off we went uh, to L.A. And hilariously, look at this. On September 23rd, 2009, I found this Facebook post, L.A., here I come. 22nd of October to the 2nd of November. Ah, ah. I mean, I thought, wow, when I, when I found that this morning, I thought that's really, um, that, that's amazing that it's still there, that memory, because I remember being petrified and, uh, uh, and so excited. And, and it was an amazing experience. Yeah. And then this was me coming back. I just thought I'd share this too with my babies. When I was, this is on November 3rd. And I said, the best thing about mama being home, presents. I remember giving my kids presents. I remember it being so great to see them. And um, yeah, it was, it was really, it was really wonderful. So that was my introduction to this powerful tool. And now I'm going to share with you the powerful tool. So comment below if you've got any experience of it. And if you have, also comment, like, what is your experience of it? Because I think when we don't understand it, at first it can feel confusing and like uh, it's a little bit like a foreign language. So I really want to keep this as simple as I can for you. So and also comment below if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. So the work has two components. It's, it's got two worksheets that are important. One is called a judge your neighbor worksheet. That worksheet you use and I'll be showing you a screenshot of it. And it, well, actually, it's uh, it's here. Yeah, this worksheet, the judge your neighbor worksheet is what you use to identify your stressful thoughts. It's very detailed. Um, it starts with in a situation. You choose a specific situation, a moment in time, not general, a moment in time. And there's a very good reason for that, because our ego does not like this work at all. Our ego wants to be right. Our ego wants to find evidence where it's, you know, not true. And you, you, it's really interesting. You'll catch your mind and how resistant we can be to finding examples of, because you have to put yourself in the other person's shoes. So powerful. But first of all, before doing that, you get to vent and you really can vent here. You can be petty in the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. This, by the way, is on the website. When you go to thework.com, on the top right hand corner, there's a button that says downloads. Don't go there now, but I'm just letting you know that um, it's very simple. And when you click when you click the button downloads, you'll see all the different worksheets that you can uh, download, basically. So so this is the one. So in this situation, in the particular situation, so for what I did when I was doing that worksheet on my sister was I remembered being on the phone with her and I remember her telling me, you know, don't go, he's stabilized, like stop it. You're, you know, you're, she didn't, I can't remember her exact words, but it was suggesting you're being irresponsible. She's like, you've got three young kids, yeah. 
So in the situation, um, I am angry at my sister because uh, she she's telling me I shouldn't visit my dying father or something like that. And then you look at I want, the prompt is I want. So what do you want them to do in this situation? I want my sister to not say that to me, for example. I don't remember what I wrote. <laughs> and then the third one, you give them advice about what they should or shouldn't do. They shouldn't tell me what to do. They should uh, keep out of my business. They should apologize to me for saying that. They should understand where I'm coming from. All of these thoughts that are causing all my stress. And then number four, what do you need them to do in order to be happy? So I need, and to be happy, you find a reference point for happiness. And uh, there's an exercise I do with clients is bringing them back to childhood. Check a moment in time in your childhood where you had that carefree, light feeling. Um, maybe you're, you know, think about it now when you were seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, doesn't matter. For a moment where you felt like you hadn't to worry in the world and you were just connected and playing and um, think about that moment and write down a few adjectives about how that felt. And so for question four, you want to try to get to that feeling. So in order for me to be happy, light, carefree, I need, so what do you need from them? So, and so then you can really exaggerate, you know, because, oh yeah, if they send that to me, then I, I you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, light and carefree, you know? So I might've said something like, I need my sister to, um, uh, tell me that I'm great for seeing my father so much or something. Or tell me that I'm a great mother or, you know, just off the top of my head I'm thinking. But you really, you know, you can spend... Honestly, I remember I used to spend sometimes, and it was common for people uh, in the work to spend up to an hour on these worksheets. I mean, I went deep into this process. Um, we had, it took, it typically took four years to certify. You had to do 200 coaching hours. You had to do six, six week training, no, four or six, I think six, actually six, six weeks trainings. Um, there was other things as well. It was, it was really um, intense. And one of the six week trainings was just on this worksheet on how to fill out a worksheet. It was that uh, in, in depth. So it's a simpler process, but it's profound and you can go very deep on it. The more, you know, you start, you'll start to get it, you know, just by practicing it. And yeah, incredible. And by the way, I should say Byron Katie herself. I mean, she was a stressed out, angry woman that people were afraid of. She was agoraphobic. She was uh, obese. She was an alcoholic. And um, she, at the age of 44, she was in a halfway house for overeaters, apparently, because her insurance wouldn't cover alcoholism, as far as I remember. And um, there's a moment where a cockroach crawled over her foot. She was sleeping on the ground. She didn't even feel worthy of sleeping in a bed. They put her in the attic away from the others in the halfway house because they were all afraid of her. This beautiful woman, if you see her on video, but she was a nasty woman full of stressful beliefs. And in this moment where the cockroach crawled over her foot, she had um, a moment of enlightenment where she realized nothing is real. And she laughed and just wow, oh my God, I've been believing all these thoughts and all her suffering disappeared. She became like a kid again. Um, I, I, I'm very curious to know what happened in her brain to cause that, but she didn't even know her family. So something happened in her brain. You know, when they came, she just loved everyone and they had to tell her, you know, I'm your daughter, I'm your son, I'm your husband. She's like, oh, lovely to meet you kind of. <laughs> it's really interesting and it's a true story. And apparently she used to walk outside in her PJs um, and, you know, go to just go to neighbors, to people's have random strangers houses and her daughter would be pulling her out of the house. I also remember having a conversation with her daughter. They, her daughter was 16 when this happened and really had a poor relationship with her mother. And when it happened, she and her friends used to sing Ding Dong, the witch is dead. So that's, you know, to show the extent of the transformation. So she became known locally as the woman with a glint in her eyes or something about her eyes. I remember that. And people were like, what is it? A little bit like me with my friend. It's like, she's got something. What is it? You know, something has changed. And so they started to come to her for help. And basically it just grew into uh, she had, a, uh, ha well, I'm not sure where it's at now since the Institute for the Work is closed, but um you know, she's written several, she's written four, at least four books. Uh, she's uh, given so many workshops uh, worldwide and she's been on Oprah and, you know, she's very well known. But uh, yeah, it's a very interesting story of what happened to her. And then she apparently, that that clarity and lightness and joy that she had 
apparently somehow started to disappear as her maybe her brain came back and um, the the functioning the correct functioning came back and so she used to do judge your neighbor worksheets for like three hours a day or was it all day she said she was surrounded by them you know she'd be judging her husband at the time um, who she then divorced so by the way that's a very important point um, you know when you question your beliefs it doesn't mean that you know if you if you love somebody that uh, or sorry if you're angry at somebody and then you release the um the stress from the belief you know you still might want to remove yourself from them right so uh that's kind of a common confusion with this work okay so the judge your neighbor worksheet is where you identify all the beliefs yep and all you have there you have not questioned them yet you're just identifying them the second Part is the one belief at a time worksheet. Yeah, there's two worksheets, the judge your neighbor worksheet and the one belief at a time worksheet. One belief at a time is frequently abbreviated to OBAT, O-B-A-A-T, the acronym, and judge your neighbor worksheet, it's a J-Y-N, <laughs> it's commonly called, yeah. So there is the J-Y-N I just showed you, and here is the OBAT, the one belief at a time. So it's in two parts, uh, the screenshot. So you basically, there's four simple questions and you're going to see them in action soon, but I'll just let you know what the questions are. It's, is it true? Is question one. Can you absolutely know that it's true? Is question two. And notice if you can see on the screen, yes or no. It's a yes or no answer. And this is so important and people resist it massively. And uh, it's really interesting. It's it's the ego coming in. It wants to put an explanation or a maybe or a, but it's a simple syllable. Yeah. Uh, question three, how do you react to what happens when you believe that thought? So you're looking at the stress that believing the thought causes. Like I had a thought for my sister. Um, she shouldn't tell me what to do. It was the belief that was causing the stress, not my sister. It's our beliefs that cause our stress, which is exciting because we can then um, uh, detach from those beliefs. And when I say detach from those beliefs, you know, by having a clear mind, we don't want to like... Um, you know, uh, repress uh, things, you know, for feeling certain emotions that might need to be processed. Um, so it's important to understand that too, because you might think this is bonkers. How can I say um, my father is dead? Is it true? Like that's ridiculous. That's rubbish. <laughs> but you have to trust the process and you're just noticing the um, emotion and the, the, that is attached and the stress is attached to different beliefs. Just trust the process and go with it. Yeah. And that's what our ego comes in. Well, I don't want to trust this. And it's so innocent. It's just questions. <laughs> What's not innocent is our, our ego and our confusion in our mind. Okay, so I'm going to go through this process, but that is the second worksheet. And you can download it. You can do this process like I did on the plane. You can do it on your own, right? It is better to do it with the facilitator because we'll try and escape. You know, we try to, uh, you have to be really firm with yourself to, you know, you might give up because you're like, oh, this is rubbish because I know I'm right. The mind loves to be right. <laughs> so I just want to share a few universal beliefs. These are also on uh, on, on the download section of the work, uh, the work website, thework.com. I need to know what to do. I mean, when you question that, you need to know what to do. Is it true? You can get an instant feeling of lightness from, oh my God, actually, no, I don't need to know what to do. I'll just go with the flow, for example. I did it wrong. There's another belief on here. These are very common beliefs that everybody suffers from. I did it wrong. Is it true? You did it wrong. And you can look, oh, if I look at this differently, well, maybe I actually did it right. And, you know, it's it's uh, when you shift perspective, you can get some really great insights. Yeah. I feel your energy. I like that one. You know, when we believe that we feel somebody and they're bad and, um, you know, Byron Katie would say that underneath all the confusion is love, that fundamentally we're human beings that love, but there's just so much confusion. You know, I've shared a little bit about that teeny example of my confusion and how that was then going to cause so much pain but you know there's people in such deep confusion um, that they do really horrible things in the world and causes a lot of suffering but also believing that we know somebody um you know is it true is it true you know we've, we've labeled them as bad or unkind or whatever yeah it's really interesting so comment below with your questions because your mind might be coming in, but yeah, but yeah, but there are bad people. Yeah, but yeah, but. <laughs> so you, you put it all on paper, you know. Um, is it true? Can I absolutely know that it's true? How do I react when I believe that thought? How do I treat people when I believe that thought? Question three is where you'll see all the stress it's causing you. And question four is where it lifts. Who would you be without that thought? 
What would it feel like without that thought? The four simple questions and then the turnarounds, which you will learn soon. Oh, and by the way, sorry, what I put it here in red and forgot to mention, work the thought in front of you. A common question is, oh my God, I have so many stressful beliefs. I don't know where to start. And I used to suffer from that. I used to think I have to question every one of them and then I'll be perfect. <laughs> Doesn't work. What you do is just the one in the moment. What is it right now that's stressing me out? And you don't worry about the rest. So this is the four questions, and this is also on uh, on the website. Just so you can actually print it out and you know put it in your pocket. It's uh, it's called the yellow card. There used to be a yellow card. I mean, probably still exists. And uh, when you go to the school for the work, you'll receive the yellow card with the four questions just to have them. Is it true? Can you absolutely know that's true? How do you react? What happens when you believe that thought? And who or what would you be without the thought? And then the turnarounds, which I'll come to. And Byron Katie gives the example of Paul, that's her ex-husband. Paul lied to me. And uh, she went through the, the process using that example. Okay. So comment below, guys, if you've got any, um, any questions about this. But hopefully so far it's clear. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do the work. And what you can do uh, so that you participate in this is you can either comment below or you can just write it on a piece of paper or it's better on a piece of paper if you have pen and paper rather than in your head. Because in our head, mm, the ego will come in, it'll sneak in. But when you put pen to paper, uh, you have a better chance of uh, it being more effective. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate how well, the process I went through in more detail when I was on the plane and I questioned that belief. But you might want to think about somebody who uh, you imagine would tell you what to do or, you know, it could be your kids, it could be your mother or father or your boss or a colleague or, yeah, you know, maybe a colleague believes they know best and you're like, you know. <laughs> so try and find a situation where you're thinking about somebody who's telling you what to do and you're really not happy about it. Yeah. Hopefully you've found uh, a situation. If not, just follow along and you might find one this afternoon. <laughs> They're all gifts, all opportunities for us to grow. Okay, so she shouldn't tell me what to do. Question one is, is it true? When I answer this, I can only answer it with a yes or no. One syllable. I promise you, no matter how often I explain this to clients, it's very hard for them to go, yes. Or the harder one is, no. So, uh, so yeah, that's, um, that's something to consider. The second question is, can you absolutely know that it's true? Can you absolutely know that it's true? So in that situation for me, my sister shouldn't tell me what to do. Can I absolutely know that it's true? And there I remember I got that shift. I was like, can I absolutely know that it's true? And you can expand on that. You could say, can you absolutely know, Neve or whoever, for your freedom and for your evolution that you, your sister shouldn't tell you what to do? I thought, oh, wow, well, actually, she can tell me whatever she wants, you know? <laughs> I don't need to control the people in my world about what words they say or don't say, yeah. So uh, I put no, yeah. Now, there is also, by the way, there's no right or wrong answer. You go with what feels true for you in that moment. So it's okay to answer uh, uh, yes. So it's okay to answer yes to question one and two, right? You're not a bad student if you answer no. You're just honestly sharing where you're at and we should not evolve ourselves we, we should not stretch ourselves beyond where we're at you know just uh, just accept where we're at it's like yes I'm furious and I absolutely believe uh, she definitely shouldn't tell me what to do okay I said no it doesn't matter how do you react this is where you're looking at the stress that the question that the that the belief causes how do you react what happens when you believe that thought she shouldn't tell me what to do so you look at what emotions arise. It's what are you feeling? So I was like angry, furious. Um, what thoughts of past or future do you see? Well, I would look, I would refer back to times in the past where my sister had also been bossy to me, my big sister, yeah. Um, I would imagine the future where I'm just not talking to her because she doesn't deserve to be in my life. <laughs> how do I treat myself and others? Well, interestingly, however you're treating others, you're the one feeling it. So you're treating yourself that way too. FYI. So if you're thinking, well, I don't want to, they don't deserve to be forgiven. You do it for you, right? For Not for them, because you're the one feeling it. You're the one feeling it all. So how do you treat yourself and others? 
unkindly, you treat them unkindly. The others in this situation would be how would I be treating my sister? So in my head, I'm treating her badly. I might be saying it out loud, but I'm treating her badly. So just as guilty. Yeah, we take on the behavior of the other person when we're um, believing a stressful thought about them. Very interesting to notice. Okay, and yeah, notes I made on it. Question three helps you to see all the stress that it's caused by believing the thought. Now, a very important rule, there's like one of the rules is um, for question one and two, just a one syllable answer. And the other rule is not to go into story. There, you'll feel a need to expand on it to the facilitator, right? To now, if you're writing it down yourself, maybe not, but you you'll feel a need to say because. So actually, I won't say the word because is banned, but it's recommended not to use the word because because that means that you're going into story and explanation, and that's not necessary. Yeah, you're just observing and giving feedback on how you feel when you're attaching to that thought. Yeah. So no explanations are necessary, no justifications are necessary. You are not there to explain it to the facilitator that's working with you. You are there for your clarity and inner freedom. So you don't need to um, you know, make any explanations, yeah? You just need to realize how much, what it's costing you to attach to the belief, basically, yeah? Okay, so those are the questions that you'll ask. And then question four, once the person has you know, really made a list of uh, and really understood how much stress it's causing them, and a question actually that's not even there, there's a lot of questions that have been removed. There used to be about 10 sub-questions on, um, on the One Believe Vision Time Worksheet. And um, one was, what is it costing you to hold on to this belief? So for me, what it was costing me was my relationship with my sister. It was costing me my health because uh, my diaphragm, you know, you feel that anger, right? And just feeling negativity. Yeah. So it was costing me a lot. And then question four, who would you be without the thought that she shouldn't tell you what to do? And you're really like Byron Katie will say the work is a meditation. You close your eyes and you go inside and it's really powerful. Um, and you're imagining yourself. Imagine what I say, this is not from Byron Katie, but I think this helps clients. Imagine the thought has been surgically removed from your brain because people say, what, what do you mean? I can't, I can't understand that. I can't do that. It's really hard for uh, the mind at the start sometimes to, to get their head around it. So um, what you've got to do is observe the same scenario again. So there I am and I'm on the phone and my sister is saying, don't go to Ireland. Dad is stabilized and you've got three children. And I cannot believe she shouldn't uh, tell me what to do. So then if I cannot believe that, I'm hearing her and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I can respond in an empowered way. It's like, well, I'm choosing to come. This is something I want to do. And my kids, I know they're going to be fine. Without any anger, without any defense, without any, um, <laughs> yeah. So it's completely different. So I'm kind of re I'm reprogramming my mind. I'm rewriting that past, yeah. And, and I have the shift and I have the connection back with my sister. Now, you might not yet be free, but you'll get the freedom comes in the turnarounds, should come in the turnarounds. You know, if it's a very strong attachment, it might take a few more, a few more beliefs surrounding the same story to question. So you turn the thought around. The opposite, she should tell me what to do. And you find examples of each turnaround. You're playing with the belief, right? And there's a, there's a particular way to play with the belief. Um, there, it's called opposite other and self, but the most important one is the opposite. Yeah, if you're stuck for time or if you're unfamiliar with it or if you're new to the work, just do the opposite. She should tell me what to do. The others are, I shouldn't tell her what to do because in my mind, I'm telling her what to do. I'm like, she shouldn't um, tell me what to do, basically. You know, so I'm just the same, right? <laughs> I'm not saying it out loud, but I'm thinking it very much and lots of other thoughts as well, right? So it's really, it's a brilliant exercise in self-awareness and looking at the side of ourselves that we're maybe not so proud of, you know, but it's okay to accept all of that as well. Um, but it can be hard to look at. And that's why we put it outwards. We project it onto others because it's easier to make them the wrong ones. Yeah. So she should tell me what to do because these are the examples I came up with because it's her truth. And do I want to be somebody who controls? Da, 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 don't say that. You're allowed to say that, but not that. I don't want to be that kind of a person. So yeah, it's her truth. Let her say it. You know, it's up to me. 
how I respond, yeah, she does not have the power to cause me to get angry. And you'll really get this. It's probably the biggest takeaway for me from the work. Nobody has the power to make you feel a certain way. It's your thoughts about the situation that are making you feel that way. Yeah. So she should tell me what to do because uh, I don't want to control her in order not to offend me. And uh, number three, she should tell me what to do. It helps her pain. Now, backstory, and this is what where I really got it, is she was on daily dialysis. Uh, she needed a kidney. Uh, her kidneys were not functioning, which is incredibly difficult for several hours a day. And I had never really sat with that and thought about what exactly that must feel like for her. Her father's dying. She's stuck on dialysis. She's got health issues. And um, so if she says something like that, you know, I, I can really understand it and I can have compassion for her. And then, gosh, you know, how lucky am I? I can just hop on a plane and I can, you know, because I'm not on dialysis every day. So, oof, you know, when I got that, it hit me, you know, then I just felt like, gosh, you know, I can be a lot more understanding here and have compassion. And um, I'm not somebody who needs, you know, to have those... Um, you know, she can tell me what she wants. Now, if it's disrespectful, obviously, if she's like calling me names or something, I don't have to accept that, you know. Um, that's the thing. People sometimes misunderstand the work and think, oh, it will make you a doormat. Not at all. Not at all. But you really, um, you take your power back and you're able to respond from uh, and communicate in a, in a much more powerful way because your brain isn't, you know, affected by the anger, right? So you're, you have a clear mind and you can respond lovingly. So that was my introduction to the work and it really, yeah, from there I questioned so many beliefs and it helped me so much in my relationships and, and it still does. I would say that, you know, I don't, you know, obsessively practice it uh, now, but it's kind of, it's in me at a certain point, you know, you just realize, oh, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you can get there very fast, the shift. So these are my personal favorites um, that, uh, I find are most helpful. This should not be happening to me. So whatever in your life is happening to you, if you question that, if it's uh, poor health, if it's some tragedy or, you know, it's like, I love what Baron Katie says, who died to make you God to decide on that, you know, who died to make you God to think that, that, that other people should suffer and you shouldn't, or you shouldn't have this experience. So it's, it's really interesting to go, okay, yeah. Uh, and to trust. Very powerful. Second one, I need that person to show up differently. Oh, that causes so much stress. When when they're not saying what we want them to say, when they're not believing what we want them to believe, when they're not uh, respecting us the way we want to be respected, you know, they get to show up as they like, and then we get to choose our response to that, right? A lot more empower empowering, right? Rather than trying to control them. Come back to ourselves, lead ourselves first. Number three, I shouldn't feel like this. And this is powerful. If you're feeling like, yeah, I do want inner peace and freedom, but right now I feel so low. If you question that, I shouldn't feel like this. Is it true? I shouldn't be feeling this feeling. Is it true? And you meditate on that. Can I absolutely know that it's true that I shouldn't be feeling this? And you'll get to a point of welcoming it and just noticing it's a sensation. It's your thoughts about, it, you know, how do you react? What happens when you're believing the thought that you shouldn't be feeling like this? It's like, oh, well, that just, I, I feel resistance. I feel sorry for myself. I feel disempowered. I feel like a victim. I um, think others have it better than me. I think I'll never succeed. I, I imagine the future where I'm always going to feel like this, for example. And then who would you be without the thought? I shouldn't be feeling like this. I shouldn't be feeling sad or low. Okay, I'd be accepting it and realizing that that's part of life. And you have a much better chance, by the way, of feeling it and moving through it and getting past it than if you're resisting it and thinking, this shouldn't be happening, this shouldn't be happening. <laughs> and then turning around, I shouldn't be feeling like this because I'm human, because, you know, something has happened in my life that's causing, that, that is causing me to feel this way, for example, and, you know, giving yourself some compassion. Number four, they should, that's uh, when you're believing that those people or that person should apologize to me or should forgive me or a good one is um, uh, they should be healthier. You know, they shouldn't be drinking so much or eating so much. Who would you be without that thought? Beautiful thing is, and I actually I just happen to have my my son's brochure for my son's school. Um, I, I, I say that it's like 
a belief, you imagine this belief, there's you and another person opposite you, and the belief blocks the connection. And when you say, who would you be without that belief? The connection comes back. Yeah. So when you're believing that mm, they should be healthier, you're putting, it's the ego, right? There's a kind of a, a, a separation that comes. And without the thought, the connection comes back. You're just noticing, you're staying out of their business. That's another uh, really great tip from the work. Uh, Byron Katie says there's three types of business. Our own business that we're responsible for. Other people's business, like what they eat, what they drink, what they say. That's their business. And then God's business, which is thunder and lightning and acts of God. But she says that when you're feeling lonely, check whose business you're in. Or angry or any kind of, you know, those uh, survival emotions. You're usually going to be in somebody else's business. And a very quick hack to get back to peace is come back to your own business stay out of their business they're on their journey they've got their own pain and they're navigating their own shit so um you know really just trust that they, they've got it and they're on their path and come back to well what about me <laughs> what's uh what's my path and then the final one here is um they shouldn't skip the queue for example um so that doesn't mean that you allow people then to skip the queue. If it's in the supermarket, for example, you know, you can say to them, like, uh, I was here before you. Can you please go back there, for example? But there's a way of responding. You can be like, ah! you know, if you're really stressed about it. Um, but it's like, they shouldn't skip the queue. Is it true? How do I react when I'm believing that thought? They shouldn't skip the queue whilst they're skipping it. I feel enraged, for example. Who would I be without the thought? They shouldn't skip the queue. Oh, I'm noticing they skipped the queue. So it really helps with having a much less stressful response and, you know, being able to communicate that in, in a better way. That's just a simple example, but you can do the work on any stressful belief. They shouldn't question my authority. They shouldn't leave me out. That's a really good one as well. You know, imagine you're in some group and people are leaving you out. Is it true they shouldn't leave me out? You know, can I absolutely know it's true? They shouldn't leave me out. It's a really good one to think about. Hmm, well, no, I don't want to dictate and control them. How do I react when I'm believing the thought they shouldn't leave me out? And how do I treat them when I'm believing the thought they shouldn't leave me out? I feel angry. You know, how do I treat them? You know, I'm upset. I feel sorry for myself. And when you look at who would you be without the thought that they shouldn't leave me out? Just noticing. And you know what? You can just have a love in your heart towards them. And guess what? You probably won't get left out the next time. And that's the power of this work as well. Because when you shift energetically, so do other people. It's really powerful. It's so great in relationships. If you're angry at a spouse or a friend and um, you do the work and who would I be without that thought and you that love comes back, the power, the, the magical thing is that whatever it was that you wanted them to uh, do that they're not doing, magic happens. A good example of that for me was I um, was having a big surgery and without going into details, there was a doctor was really, um, you know, really off with me. It was very unprofessional and kind of lost it with me um, on a Skype call. <laughs> and um, it was actually when I was donating a kidney to my sister and the doctor that was kind of above on, on my case and something happened and uh, it was shocking and I was so upset about it. And um, I did the work on it. He should apologize to me. That was it. I was furious. He should apologize to me. And I completely let go of it. And I was like, well, you know, Irish doctors, there's a thing, you know, they, it's like, well, there's no way he's going to apologize to me anyway. But, but I really had that need. And when I let go of the need in my inbox the next day with an email from him apologizing. And it's amazing because I had shifted and I felt love in my heart for him and I had no need anymore for him to apologize to me. But then it came, right? Now, that is not the reason to do the work. You don't go maybe if I do the work, I'll get them to apologize. You cannot wait for it. You cannot, you know, you have to not need it, which is the exact same in manifestation. So this is really complementary to manifestation work and Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. It's a really a powerful addition to it. I think the two of them work very, very well together. So I use both with clients. Okay, so that is uh, all the beliefs, all the stressful beliefs come up below. Again, if there's any questions, um, oh, there is. I will read all of these afterwards. And um, yeah, oh, Julie, you never heard of her. Oh, your life's going to change. Yes, and Kriva has and, and, and do love the work. Yeah, super. I mean, it's really only by experiencing it. And when you get that shift, you're like, oh, and then you get the realization. Oh, my God, it was my beliefs. 
it wasn't the situation that was causing my stress. And then you start to feel excited because you're like, oh my God, I can actually shift my feelings. I can shift my health because it is such a negative impact on our health. So um, it, it really is powerful. Uh, she has four books, Byron Katie, Loving What Is is the one I would recommend starting with um, for questions that can change your life. So that's the screenshot of that book. And then another book I love from her is called I Need Your Love, Is It True? I remember I read that in a weekend and it had a profound effect on me. I really let go of the need for approval. It was so powerful. Now, I've since recommended to a lot of people and they don't seem to have the same wow as I do. So just letting you know that. But I remember for me, I just it just made so much sense to me, you know, because it also in our businesses, it can really hold us back. Like um, we won't put ourselves out there if we're needing other people's approval, needing their love, their approval. Um, you know, we're afraid to mess up. We're afraid to make mistakes. We're afraid to take risks. But if you let go of that, you get your freedom and um, you'll be a lot more spontaneous and show up a lot more authentically. So uh, I would recommend that book as well for that. Um, and also if you're, you know, codependent for codependency for, you know, in relationships, believing that we need the love from the partner. When you question that and realize, wow, I actually don't need that. I need it from myself. You turn it around to, I need the love from me. And uh, yeah, again, you get your clarity back. It's a real, it's a clear mind. All the distortion comes from our beliefs. A uh, third book, A Thousand Names for Joy, that's a bit more advanced. Um, it's not a story, really. It's just different kind of sharings. Uh, but but it, is, it is really nice to dip into. And then the more recent book, A Mind at Home with, with Itself, is another one. But I would start with Loving What Is, personally, or which whatever one you want. There's no rules, right? <laughs> um, the most important thing is just that you can learn how to identify and question your beliefs. So I'll just remind you, just going to go back to the two worksheets that you can download from the, the website. Actually, I'm going to show you. Let me just stop sharing my screen. And oh, wait, no, I didn't want to stop sharing. I wanted to stop the presentation. Ha! <laughs> Let me just go back. Um, so. OK. Bear with me. I can find uh, Chrome. Okay. Right. So the work.com, www.thework.com is uh, Baron Katie's website. It's Meteor Internal Wisdom is what she says. And that's what it is. Yeah. And then you see here in the top right, downloads. It, and by the way, it's in every language. The great thing is, if your mother tongue is French or German or whatever, you can you can uh, switch languages. So there's the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. You see how easy it is to access them? Um, there's the uh, OBAT, the yellow card, and then support in identifying beliefs and emotions. This is good because sometimes we've, we're if we're not used to identifying how we feel, it can be really difficult. Like, I don't know. How do you react? What happens when you're believing that thought? Like, how do you feel? I don't know. People can answer, I don't know. So this is really great because, um, uh, let me show you it. There, look, these are all the emotions. So you can literally pick and choose from this list, all the emotions. Yeah. And for question four, who would you be without the thought, the lighter emotions? So that's available on the website as well. Um, the work one, two, three. I don't even know what that is. That's this new book. Oh yeah, there's also a little book, an introduction to the work. The little book, you can download that and it's uh, a short version explaining the work. So it's all for free, guys. Not only that, this is what I would recommend more than any of that is the YouTube videos. So if you scroll down, there's a few on the homepage here and um, uh, they're good to look at. But if you if you click, I mean, uh, this one actually, um, it's it's on YouTube and then you'll just see lots more, right? You can search. Uh, this is a, a really good uh, facilitation about. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, yeah, he's explaining. He's sharing his uh, what he's angry about. And there's Byron Katie. She's facilitating him. And yeah, of course, by the end of it, he gets so much clarity and look, he's smiling. And, and that's the power of this work. And it's uh, you learn a lot just from watching these. And they're really there's lots of them on YouTube. I was going to say hundreds. I'm not sure if there's hundreds, but uh, I think that there's definitely a lot of them. So I hope this served you. Please uh, don't hesitate. If you've got any questions, um, rather than messaging me privately, 
I prefer, unless you're shy too, but I prefer that you would um, comment below so that everyone else can benefit from it too, um, because it's normal to have questions about this process. And that mind, the, it's the ego, uh, might come in with, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. <laughs> so um, uh, I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. And if you want to try the work, then hire me for a session. Um, reach out and um, I'll let you know how that works. And uh, we can, if there's a particular issue in your life that you just can't seem to let go of, then I can help you with the a judge your neighbor worksheet to get your thoughts on paper and the one believe at a time worksheet it's it can be really incredible you know if we do a deep dive for 90 minutes um to to shift something very powerful thank you for tuning in and please do share this with anybody you think that was struggling right now that could benefit from this tool because um it it really works you've just got to trust the process and um let go of that mind and you know that there there will be resistance because we've got something called the i know mind the mind that believes it knows best and you know that's something to question well well what if i don't know best because right now i'm suffering so maybe there's another way uh, where i don't suffer and where my freedom, my joy, and my peace is. And it's available to us all right now inside beyond those thoughts. Lots of love.